May the Lord give us peace. A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints by Marion A. Habig, November 11th, Servant of God, Bonavita, Confessor, Third Order. We have already made the acquaintances of many saints and saintly persons of the Franciscan family, who were descendants of noble and prominent families. Some may draw the conclusion that even among the saints, those are preferred who once were people of rank. That, however, is not the case. Only virtue counts in this life of the saints. But since it is in itself a great virtue, if anyone who is wealthy and prominent sacrifices the conveniences of the world to serve God in humility and mortification, and because God rewards such a sacrifice with extraordinary graces, it so happens that among those who devote themselves to a life of piety, there are many persons of rank who have attained heroic sanctity. Then, too, the virtues of prominent persons are more liable to be recorded and handed down to, pos to posterity, whereas the hidden virtue and sanctity of many a person among the lowly will be brought to light only at the Last Judgment. And yet there are records also of many from the humbler ranks of life who have given the most remarkable examples of virtue and proofs of holiness. Such a servant of God was Bonavita. Born of lowly parents in the little Italian town of Lugo, he earned his livelihood as a smith. Although his hands were black and sooty, he preserved his soul immaculately white and clean even from his youth. His life agreed with his name, Bonavita, means good life. After joining the Third Order of St. Francis, he advanced rapidly in true holiness. Among the members of the order, In his parish, none was more temperate in his manner of living, none more humble of heart, none kinder towards the poor than Bonavita. One day in winter, he saw a poor person approach half naked and shivering from cold. Proudly, he took off his coat and gave it to the needy person. As he went on his way home without a coat, the children ran after him and made fun of him. But Bonavita walked on quietly as though he saw and heard nothing. His thoughts were continually occupied with God. When he was in his smithy, fanning the flame of his forge with the bellows, he would ask God to set his heart aflame with the fire of his love. God blessed his charity towards his neighbor with miracles. Often the bread which he was distributing to the poor was multiplied in his hands. By merely making the sign of the cross, he healed many sick persons. By the sign of the cross, he once extinguished a fire in Lugo, which had already burned many houses to the ground, and was continually to continuing to spread. On another occasion, he was about to drive some oxen through a stream. He made the sign of the cross in order to be preserved from misfortune. The waters at once divided, and he passed through with the oxen on dry ground. However, he too had his crosses and trials. For a long time, he was sorely tempted by the devil, but with the help of God, he was successful in overcoming all temptations. His Oh, he was only 37 years old when God called him to eternal bliss in the year 1375. His body was laid to rest in the Franciscan Church at Lugo, and on special feast days, his head, which is enclosed in a precious shrine, is exposed for veneration. Our Practical Christianity In order to be holy, it is sufficient to be imbued with the spirit of active Christianity as was the servant of God, Bonavita. It was not the miracles he performed that constituted his sanctity. It consisted rather in humility and purity, in his love of God and neighbor. Even if he had wrought no miracles, he would have been as great a saint. Christianity was compared by Christ himself with a seed. A dead germ has no value. A living germ draws to itself the virtues of the soil and produces a plant according to the nature of the seed. Thus does living Christianity absorb all the thoughts and actions of a person and produce a life such as that of Bonavita. Such a person can say with the Apostle, I live not I, but Christ lives in me. Consider that Christian life consists first of all in having a living faith, for which reason Christians are also called the faithful. Without a firm and unshaken faith in all that God has revealed and the Catholic Church proposes for our belief, we cannot be numbered among the faithful. But this faith must be a lively one and must be manifest itself in our words and actions. Shall faith without works be able to save him? 
Do you wish to know whether Christ lives in you? Then examine the thoughts and sentiments of your heart to say whether you adhere firmly to all the truths of the faith. Consider the language that proceeds from your lips, whether it conforms with the teachings and the precepts of the Christian faith and of Christian charity. Examine your deeds, whether they reveal an act of Christian spirit. There are some Christians to whom the word apply, words apply. You have the same name of being alive, but you are dead. You are called a Christian, but in reality, are you one? Consider that a Christian, that as Christians we must shape our lives according to the example of Christ. Put me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, says Christ to his beloved. The seal which is impressed on the quer or wax leaves an exact image of itself. True, the impression is of a different composition, not so valuable and not so stable as the seal itself. Nevertheless, it is entirely similar in appearance and design. Aim, therefore, to make the thoughts that take root in your heart, the words that proceed from your lips, the deeds of your arms and hands, conformable to those which Christ taught, thought, spoke, and did. Ask yourself at times, would Christ have acted in this way? He from whom we have received the name of Christians must be the model we should aim to reproduce in our lives. Prayer of the Church O God, who does show the light of thy truth unto those who go astray, that they may return to the path of righteousness. Grant that we who are of the Christian faith may abhor whatever is contrary to that name, and strive after that which is in agreement with it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy upon you. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pax et bonum.